and oh <laughs> hey guys this is solar gray coming at you from maximum comics and sweltering i'm paying for my <laughs> sins hot las vegas nevada and i'm here with dustin how you doing man hey doing great thank you oh fantastic so yeah i was talking with one of um one of your other guys a little earlier and this place is just impressive oh thank this you. really is from thank the you. outside it looks like okay well i guess there's a comic book store there yeah 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 and then I walk in, and it's like, oh, <laughs> oh my God, it's clean. We, we do try. Yeah, we do try for that. <laughs> awesome. So, yeah, so um, I want to thank you for um, talking to me about this stuff. So let's talk some of the stuff that you're into. I'm, I've just found out that this is the premier hero clicks place for Nevada. Or for Las Vegas, rather, yeah, not well, the whole state. Pretty, pretty much Nevada, too. We we're, we're, have a pretty big community out here. Um, a lot of our guys are uh, top-tier competitors. They go out to different uh, venues, been in, into worlds and regional events. And we do host um, the uh, WizKids Open, which is a big regional event. And it alternates, so twice a year. Typically, you'll get the quarterly uh, regional tournament here. Wow. Wow, you're almost sounding a lot like uh, one of our friends from Majestics Collectibles. Oh, uh, Pat Yapoko? Yeah. <laughs> Everybody Maybe knows Pat. <laughs> he, and I, he and I have, have uh, butted heads in, in big tournaments a couple of times, yeah. Uh, so that means you're way beyond the level of my play. I can tell you that right <laughs> now. Well, you know, I mean, we get you in a table. We'll, we'll, we'll try it out sometime. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> well, fair enough. So we've talked a little bit about gaming with, um, with Tim. A little bit earlier. Sure. What I wanted to talk to you about is Game of Thrones in space. I'm talking about Marvel's Inhumans because ah, okay. you're the Inhumans guy, right? That's my thing. Yeah, that's kind of my kind of my deal. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> that guy, I forgot his name because I'm terrible and I'm not a real interviewer. But the Inhumans run that came out, I believe it was Hickman. Um, the the Marvel Knights and Humans thing. Oh, that, that came uh, the, the Marvel Knights and Humans run was uh, by uh, Jay Lee and uh, Paul Jenkins. Jenkins, yeah. that's right. It was Paul Jenkins before he went to the Avengers and Fantastic Four and did yeah. all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. And Hickman did the uh, recently the Infinity crossover, which they were a big part of uh, as well, leading into Secret Wars. So yeah, he's he's been involved too. So you're not you're not totally off base with that. Congratulations, you now have credibility with the people that, that's actually watching the stuff. This guy knows his stuff. Seriously. Yeah, sorry about the test. I know I, I felt like a sorority girl right there. Like, okay. So. Yeah, so honestly, like, you're, you're seriously like an Inhumans fans and, and all that stuff. So, um, okay, got to ask, got to ask, would you fashion yourself more a Karnak, a Black Bolt, or, um, or a Gorgon? I, I definitely would want to say more of a, a black bolt, other than we can have this interview without everyone exploding around us. Um, that, <laughs> I was that, about to say, like, I, I'm still here. Yeah, that, that's the guy I want to emulate, you know. I mean, he's, a, he's my favorite character, so you know, i got to go that way. Yeah, that's fair. I've always wanted to be a Karnak myself, but I know I'm a Triton. <laughs> oh. I'm also Peter Chris. I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Triton, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but okay. <laughs> nah, that's a joke. I'm, I'm hydrophobic. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> So, yeah, so um, you're definitely, like, big into the Inhumans. So what are the other stuff that drew you to comics in general? Uh, well, I've always been into comics, really. Like, uh, I remember as a kid, I grew up learning to read with, uh, like, my uncle's comic book collection. And uh, so he was big on Spider-Man, had some Superman issues, and those are my first, you know, loves. And just kind of, like, grew into a little everything over time in the 90s a lot of indie stuff came out so i started kind of diversifying my tastes a bit hitting up like uh scud the disposable assassin oh. was a big one and of course bone was hitting real oh. big at the time and everything Man. so i read a a little everything right now awesome. um a lot of horror books uh, joe hill's lock and key is a favorite of mine anything that jonathan hickman's writing i'm pretty much following too so yeah there's a lot out there that's worth reading Oh, fantastic. Man, so this is really, this is, like, really good. So I got to ask, like, as one of the, how can I put it, the tallest dudes behind here, <laughs> um, in your time working here, would you say that there's been an increase in people of color and female or people of color, female and LGBT, as far as customers and comic fans and things go? Uh, yeah, generally, there's been a big increase um, all around. Now, like the most obvious one is uh, noticeable is uh, is um, female readers, and because it used to be none, 
you know, <laughs> like when I when I was collecting uh, back in high school and everything, so 20 years ago at this point, but you'd almost never see a female reader or, uh, you know, female collector wearing T-shirts and geek memorabilia. And that aspect of society has really been um, catered to, been growing. Uh, he had some gateway properties like Buffy the Vampire Slayer really kind of grew that contingent. And now it's pretty universal. Um, you've definitely seen... Really just all walks of life, though. I say persons of color, like you say. And we definitely have a big uh, LGBT community out here, especially since uh, the store's owner, Jay, is very involved in that part of the community himself. And so um, he just, you know, finds people from all walks of life, and we're very inviting. And I think people find uh, more of a home and a community here in this store than they have traditionally in other stores. And we really like to, you know, make sure everyone is invited with, with open arms. Oh, man. So you're telling me that comics and games are for everybody, and this comic store is actually, like, telling people, come in, we have a place for you? I think uh, I think you kind of have to, yeah. I mean, definitely, uh, there's there's something on the shelf that I think should appeal to everybody, and I think you just got to make sure people people know that. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that is fantastic. Man, you're just, wow. It's almost like you were made for all these interviews, I'm telling you. <laughs> Oh man, so this is this is really this is really good. I'm really happy that I found this place. Like I said, I'm only in town for the weekend. You know, we go around the country to every comic and game store that we can find and do the interview and say, "Hey, Deckers, out there! If you're in Vegas, go to this place. If you're in Austin, go to these places. If you're in Bellevue, that is what we do here." Yeah. Sure. And yeah, this place is five shades of awesome. So I have to ask. Um, being a comic book store employee, and we all know the curse, what's the stuff that makes your rent hard to pay in the store? Um, gosh, the only... <laughs> I.e. the stuff that's like, you know, I know I got to pay my bill, but I got to buy that thing when it comes out on Wednesday. What's, what's that for you? Oh, man. Um, there's so much. Right now, <laughs> uh, right now, I got hit real hard these last couple weeks with like five big game things coming out Ooh. all at once. So I had... The Mighty Thor expansion from Heroclix. Yeah. I had the new Star Wars Destiny set, Empire at War, come out like a week after that. Oh, jeebers. Uh, we had uh, the new Versus expansion. <laughs> we had uh, some new Arkham Horror stuff come oh out for the new God. LCG. Oh and, yeah, so like everything, just boom, 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 all at once. So a little bit at a time. I'm chunking it down. We're going you know, through it all. It is most definitely a marathon. It is not a sprint, <laughs> I can tell you. Yeah. Because I know the Mighty Thor set set me back. The Arkham Horror thing set me back. Um, the DC Metal is killing me. Oh, yeah. Yeah, there's a, yeah, DC Metal is an amazing storyline. And we actually just had uh, Marvel get another hit with the Marvel Legacy number one that just started up. So I think they're, uh, they're going to come back, uh, you know, running out of the blocks with that. So, uh, yeah, I mean, there's... There's a lot to read out there, too. I gotta say, Marvel kicked my teeth in with the legacy <laughs> of Amadeus Cho and Bruce Banner. Mm. That one that one really killed me. But I'm a little leery because I've still got giant event fatigue now that we're finally getting off of Secret Empire and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can definitely understand that if when you get, um, you know, event after event, and not all of them, which a lot of them have been good ideas, but haven't had enough time to cook, I think, afterwards and really let the, the new status quo set in. But I feel like they're going with a better direction in this, in that Legacy is not a, uh, a big event. It's more of a banner, much like Rebirth was for DC. So I feel like if each of the individual titles goes off in a quality direction like they're trying to set up, then you'll see some really good stories come out of that. Awesome blossom. Well, that's about all the time we have for this interview. I want to thank you. And Deckers out there, we're just going to let you guys know, if anybody tells you that you can't like what you like or do what you do because of the circumstances of your birth, you tell them to take that card and put it back in the deck. This is Solar <laughs> Gray signing out. And now we